to the point with Congressman Bill Pascrell, focusing on the concerns and issues facing the families of New Jersey's 9th Congressional District. Hello, I'm Congressman Bill Pascrell. I would like to welcome you to To The Point. Millions of Americans are living with long-term disabilities as a result of brain injury. Brain injuries are caused by falls, accidents, military conflict. Others are attributed to sports. In recent years, parents and coaches, student athletes have begun to take the threat of head injury in sports much more seriously. This is imperative because every concussion is brain damage and needs to be treated with the gravity it deserves, parents. As the founder and co-chair of the Congressional Brain Injury Task Force, I've long worked to help prevent, and manage, and treat traumatic brain injury in our student athletes. This includes passing legislation to provide states with federal funding to address TBI and introdu introducing legislation to support concussion management for our student athletes and making helmets and other sports equipment safer. In December, Congress passed an omnibus appropriations bill that fully funded TBI research and prevention programs. I fought for an additional $85 million on the omnibus for brain research through the Brain Initiative. And when $25 million was cut from the Defense Health Program on TBI, we led the charge to have it restored. With me today to discuss this are three other leaders in raising awareness, preventing, and treating TBI. First, Leonard Marshall, uh, a former defensive lineman with the New York Giants who's been diagnosed with signs of CTE in his brain. CTE is a degenerative disease of the brain found in athletes. Second, Dr. Nancy Shirovalati, Director of Neuropsychology and Neuroscience Laboratory and Traumatic Brain Injury Laboratory at the Kessler Foundation. And third, Wendy Burke, Public Education Coordinator of the Brain Injury Alliance of New Jersey. They've done a fantastic job in helping us over these last 15 years. So welcome all of you. Thank you. Thank I'm you honored to have you here. Yes. You know, uh, I was saying before to, to Nancy, uh, when we started this, and when we started the task force in 1999, you could fit the people of into who had interest in the Congress in a phone booth. Now we've got over 120 bipartisan people who work with me uh, on these very important issues. Leonard, there was something in the New York Times just a few days ago on a football player who played for the Giants. Mm -hmm. And his name was Tyler Sash. Died at 27 years of age. He died from a, an overdose of uh, painkillers. Okay. Which he had to use because of his injuries sustained while he was a football player. But I want to just get your attention on something. I want to quote from the New York Times. Okay. Dr. Ann McKee, chief of neuropathology at the VA Boston Healthcare System, and a professor of neurology and pathology at the Boston University of School of Medicine, conducted the examination after Mr. Sash passed away and said Tuesday that the severity of the CTE in Sash's brain was about the same as the level in the brain of the former NFL star, Junior Seau. And Junior, as you know, committed suicide in 2012 at the age of 43. We're talking about a big deal here. What's yes. your take on this? Well, you know, it, it's indicative of the space and the time that we're in. I mean, uh, this is the same woman that said that 90% of players that play in the National Football League when they retire will have some form of CTE. Um, and Dr. I've seen these guys. Like, yeah, well. I've gone and visited them, 40, 45 years old. They're like vegetables. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I say to myself, well, the league had to know way back when that there's something odd if there's such a pervasive amount of these folks that are out there. And what were they doing about it? Well, that's the thing. You know, you know Bill, the, the issue pertains to uh, inclusiveness and transparency. And I think that the NFL did a poor job with transparency. I think they did a poor job with hiring the right people, as both of these women sitting to my left and right would attest to, in terms of 
people to um, be involved in this, but deeply committed to it. Right. I mean, when you hire a rheumatologist mm -hmm. to deal with a neurotic issue, yeah. what does that say to, right, what right. does that speak to? Right. That doesn't speak to transparency. No, it doesn't. So, you know, that's one of the things that bothers players like myself who really put in a lot of time and integrity right. to building that game and that sport. Yeah, and we want parents to be listening very carefully about all three of our guests and what they have to say. That's very, very important. Not trying to scare anybody, but this is the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not making this stuff up. Right. And back in 1999, when, 98, 99, when I first got involved in this, it was right. from a friend of mine whose son had traumatic brain injury from an accident. Right. And I could not believe what's been done since then till now in discovering the sources uh, and what happens after this mm -hmm. unfortunate situation develops. I, when I looked at these football players, I'm talking about, you know, we're not just talking about football players or boxers that have these injuries. We're talking about all sports. We're talking about male. We're talking about female. female. Yep. I was just talking to Wendy uh, earlier uh, before we went on of a young lady down in Marlboro High School. She's in college now. Right. Nine or 10 concussions, she was a basketball player. Mm -hmm. What the heck were we waiting for? Yeah. The gentleman up in um, uh, Montclair who died. Second time they put him back in after he had the first concussion, had another concussion, and that was the end of it. Now that was due to no concussion protocol That's at that time. That's right. Which is which is something that now we have it. You know, we're yeah. moving in that direction so, for a change. But I also think that you make an excellent point, and that is that concussion is a mild form of traumatic brain injury. Correct. And while there has not been a lot of research on concussion and helping people recover from the symptoms, there has been a lot of research on traumatic brain injury, mild, moderate, and severe. So I think where we are now, I think we're at a critical point where we can take that research that's been done in traumatic brain injury over the last 10 or 20 years and start to apply that to concussion, to CTE, to help the players that are suffering from right. this and the players that will be diagnosed with it in the future. Dr. Chevrolanti, the only thing that's moved this quicker than uh, what, what usually happens in the Congress of the United States were the two wars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm where the signature injury of Iraq and Afghanistan was traumatic brain injury. Yes, it was. Roadside bombs, right. concussions. Right. 20, we, we say that the numbers, and we look through the numbers, 22% of those guys and gals in theater had TBI. Mm -hmm. Many of them didn't know it. Mm -hmm. never, not, many of them never reported it. It's like, the, it's like the kid that gets hit on the field playing baseball yes. or something. Mm -hmm. He don't want to come out of the game. He doesn't want to not go back into the game. They didn't say a darn, darn, darn word. Here's the crazy piece about it. Traumatic brain injury we know of. It's the cognitive impairment that's caused by traumatic brain right. injury, which is where everyone is ignorant. That's right. right. And they need to be well-versed in this and understand what that impairment is and how to deal with that impairment. And I think you also make Go ahead, Wendy. Right. I think you make a great point because people think of concussion and when you hear students talk, it's I got knocked out, my right. bell was rung. <laughs> people don't recognize that that can lead to long long term consequences Absolutely. and how it can change your life, your cognitive ability, your memory, your mood, and just affect somebody in every aspect of their life. And that's I think what we need to do more education about right. is getting people to realize that what's happening on the field, in recreation, and in their life will have a long-term impact on their mm -hmm. quality of life. A glaring effect. Yeah. I, I'm so happy that we've accelerated the education. Mm -hmm. uh, the war pushed that because mm -hmm. when, I, when I visit our, our soldiers in the various hospitals who take care of mm -hmm. traumatic brain injury, and to see when I first was going and then what, what's happening now, that's been accelerated to yeah. put them on rehab situations to get them to, to, to manipulate those parts of the brain that are not damaged mm -hmm. in order to compensate for those parts that mm -hmm. are damaged. What's the research that's being done in the military is going to help the civilian side Absolutely. just as well. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. we have done some recent work at Kessler 
where we do neuroimaging. We have a state-of-the-art neuroimaging center at Kessler where we're able to scan um, people with brain injury before and after treatment. And what we're showing is that with only a 10-session treatment, non-invasive, purely behavioral, teaching them skills to help them remember new information, we can change the way the brain is actually functioning. So we're seeing new areas of the brain more active after treatment, and that's correlating with better memory. So we're able to intervene now. We're able to help these folks. It's a matter of getting this work that's been done in brain injury out to a larger population. How would you compare what's happened in the past uh, 10 years to the, you know, the past 150, 200 years? What, what's, what's going on right now? There is so much going on that I couldn't begin to answer that question in the next 60 seconds. Okay. It's across, across the nation. This is, I think we've turned brain injur injury into a national issue, thanks yeah. much to much of the work that you've done. Um, and I think that now there are so many scientists and so many clinicians and mm -hmm. activists that are focused on the issue. And that's why we've moved ahead so quickly in the past couple of years. I think there's, all, there's so much more to come in the next decade. And I think back to, it's 10 years that we had our first concussion summit at Giant Stadium, actually. Remember and <laughs> in, um, in 2005, actually, New Jersey was in the forefront of recognizing that we were getting so many calls and so many inquiries from people who were getting hurt while playing sports that's and right. in recreation that's sports right. that we actually gathered together a group of professionals. I know you were right on in, um, in the beginning and developed a consensus statement. Getting Most people didn't know what we were talking about. Nobody we knew what we were talking about. about. Way, no, and, and it was really <laughs> just the beginning of you know, the, the concussion and, and how we brought it mainstream and to see right. where we are 10 years. And next month will be our 10 year anniversary since Fantastic. we had that summit. And we at the Brain Injury Alliance of New Jersey continue to have a concussion committee that meets on a monthly basis. And we really bring together all of the top healthcare professionals across the state. So whether you fell off a motorcycle, I'm yes. sorry, I did whether you fall off the roof when you're fixing the shingles, mm -hmm. wh whether you're in a car accident, Correct. whether you're on the battlefield, yes. or whether you're on the, the fields for sports, be it yes. male or female, mm -hmm. these injuries are happening. There's a, a couple of million people that get injured every year, civilians in the right. United well, the States of America. the statistics are that 1.7 people sustain a traumatic brain injury each year. That does wow. not account for people who do not seek uh, mm -hmm. attention, do not seek an emergency room or any type of medical care, and it also does not account for the people that suffer an acquired brain injury due we're, to strokes or other a, aspects. A break, but I, I just want to leave you with this thought as to, you know, where, where we're going on this, and these are things that you don't have to have children in order to concern yourself about what happens right. when, you know, you get that uh, proverbial bump on the head. Mm -hmm. We're talking serious business here. Yes. And we're going to be back with you in just a moment. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're right back with our experts. And they're doing a fantastic job. We'll be right back with you. Our veterans put everything on the line to protect our freedom. We may never be able to repay them for their sacrifice, but we can show them just how much we appreciate all they've done. Every day, hundreds of people just like you volunteer to help our veterans. You can help by simply sharing your time, lending a warm smile, a supportive hand, or a sympathetic ear to someone who needs it. Everyone can do something to make our veterans know how much we appreciate their service. What will you do? A landmine blew Ben through the door of his patrol vehicle. When I came here, I, I couldn't move. David was broadsided on the highway. They weren't very hopeful at the time that he would survive at all. An IED wounded Mike in Afghanistan. Don't remember all of the blast. Was over 500 pounds of explosives. Their physical injuries have healed. The traumatic brain injuries, TBIs, haven't. The way I could describe it is just you're afraid. Am I going to start forgetting things? TBI is as serious as any battlefield injury. You're just not the guy you used to be. Thankfully, VA has made important advancements in TBI. Seeing it, treating it, understanding it and they're here to help veterans affected by it. I can see that what we're doing here at the Polytrauma Unit is to move from survivability to thriveability. If you think you or a veteran you know has sustained a brain injury, get screened. We're back with our very, very, very important guests. Talk about traumatic brain injury, where we're going on this. Parents, family members, you better listen very carefully to the rest of our show. This is for you. 
This is for all of us. Uh, doctor, let me ask you this question. Uh, we fought very hard to get more money into research and development. We start out very low number, 14, 15 mm -hmm. million. Now we're up to 291 million. Wh where is this, in, uh, this research going? Where do you think we're headed in terms of, you know, something we can grasp onto as to show progress? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the most important direction we can take in research is treatment. We need to identify more treatments that are effective at getting people back to their normal lives. We need to get people back to work. We need to get them back out into the community so they can participate in the community and live fuller and richer lives. We've already made great strides in that area, particularly with the work that we've done at Kessler Foundation as well as many of our colleagues nationwide, where we're now beginning to identify treatments that can treat cognitive problems and other issues that stem right. from traumatic brain injury. And that's key. We have to show that the treatments work because that's how you get the insurance right. companies to pay for it. And, and whether you're talking about chemistry or whether you're talking about physical rehab, mm -hmm. or whether you're talking about developing certain parts of the brain that have not been damaged. And Leonard had mentioned it before, cognitive situation, right. the consequences of this thing. I've met many of these uh, players, not only football players, that have, were the victims. They were victims. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I, I'm shocked by how almost, they be, many of them are vegetables. I don't want to use that term, but that's, yeah. That's my, my term, and, uh, and some have died very prematurely, unfortunately. What if, a doctor mentioned about the community. Where is the community involved in this? So we've done a ton of outreach into the community, but more education is still needed. We started, as, as we mentioned, you know, years ago, starting to address and increase awareness about concussions in education, yes. reaching out to schools, reaching out to parents. And it seems like, you know, over the last few years, with all the attention that it's getting, the parents are on board. The parents are terrified. Um, and we've heard at different um, seminars that we've been in that parents are starting to pull their kids out of the Pop Warner. The Pop Warner leagues are suffering. Though, as we keep talking about, this is not just an issue for football. This is an right. issue for lots of different activities. Absolutely. But but unfortunately, it's still very difficult to penetrate the student athlete. And we actually did some pre and post test evaluations yeah, most of these with athletes students. Think they're above all of this. Absolutely. Yeah. And they don't <laughs> understand <laughs> right. how, no how, how this will affect their life. Right. And so we've actually done some pre tests trying to gauge the awareness about concussions with athletes, do some education, and then post test. And we do see the, the pendulum swinging just a little bit, that there's an increased awareness and people are starting to realize that this one game can actually change the rest of their life. Sure. Um, but definitely more education, more awareness is needed to be able to let people realize the consequences of not reporting a concussion. Right. And that's yeah. really what- This is what happened in this on, on, the, on the field of battle too. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Right. And one of the most important messages we try to get out, especially to the student athlete, is if you're not feeling good, if you have symptoms of concussion, if you have a headache, if you're nauseous, if you're feeling dizzy, if you're more fatigued, you need to let somebody know. You need to speak right. up. And as somebody That's who That's hard to do though, isn't it? It is hard to do, but we use messages like we had just spoken about yeah. a young man, Preston, who had sustained a second concussion. And his message is very clear. It's better to sit out for one game then sit out for the rest of your life. Right. And so that's the message we try to get out to athletes. I want to ask Leonard, uh, you and I have met Dr. Uh, Bennett uh, Amalu, who started the research into CTE, which is particular brain disease, right. caused by particular aggravation um, and damage of the brain uh, through physical contact of sorts. Not that that's the only way to have brain damage, right. the physical contact. It's not. Uh, what was your impression of the doctor, and why did the NFL s try to silence him? I think that when Bennett determined that what chronic traumatic encephalopathy really was in terms of his research and understanding what tar protein is on the brain and bringing that to the forefront for people who didn't quite understand that, I think that's what disappointed the National Football League. If you look at today, just three days ago, the NFL pulled out of a concussion research study. They pulled all the funding back from it. We're talking 40 and 40 plus million dollars hmm. back in research money that they already had committed to understand and fully understand more 
what chronic traumatic encephalopathy is, how it affects the player, how it affects the family, and the substatue of people associated with players that witness CTE and live with CTE. So it's a shame that... How do you handle it? Well, I deal with it on a daily basis. I, I have great doctors um, at Mount Sinai, at, at Lenox Hills Hospital. Uh, one of my best friends happens to be um, um, the head of ER at Lenox Hills and happens to be uh, an authority on head trauma, um, a Dr. Robert Glatter. And um, when I have my spats and my issues associated with CTE, he's a phone call away. Not too many people have a relationship like that, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. okay? So I'm fortunate to have someone like that. My dear friend Bob Costas, his lovely wife Jill, um, uh, uh, my friend Julian Bales, uh, my friend Ben Amalu, um, people like that in my life that really care and are concerned about the wellness of Leonard Marshall after professional football. So you, saw, you thought the movie was a reflection of the reality of oh, what no you've doubt. experienced. No doubt. I mean, uh, <laughs> no doubt. I mean, you see the scene, as powerful as it may be, where Mike Webster takes his life inside of his pickup truck. I mean, is that normal? Yeah, yeah. Is that normal, not, Doc? That's not, not normal. I think what we have to think about moving forward, the reality is that football is part of American culture. It will remain part of American culture. That's a lot that of the other change. sports, too. Right. However, one thing that's important to think about is not all players are suffering from the symptoms right. that you're suffering from that's and others correct. have suffered from. So what's the difference between those players who are experiencing those symptoms and those players who live a long life never experiencing those symptoms? You think it's genetic? Symptoms? I don't know if it's genetic. There's a lot of research going on in the TBI community as well yeah. as other um, neurological illnesses that show that cognitive reserve plays an issue. So cognitive what reserve... The, what is that? Cognitive reserve is um, the intellectual capacities that you have available to you. So if you have more cognitive reserve, right. you're less likely to show cognitive decline. But upon autopsy, you may have the same amount of neuropathology. That's what happened with Frank Gifford. Frank that Gifford. does not exactly surprise me. That does Gifford. not surprise me. So perhaps we can boost someone's cognitive reserve. Perhaps when a football player is still playing right. or has recently retired, maybe we can teach them strategies, memory strategies, strategies to improve their processing speed or their attention, and we can boost their neurological system to be able to stave off that cognitive decline for a longer period of time, right. thereby increasing their functioning. That's just one area of research that I think still needs attention moving forward. Might we establish the protocol which I recommended uh, 12 years ago at the beginning of war, that we test soldiers before they go out in the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Now just, you know, shave this down to the civilian area and, and whatever, and, uh, situation you're going to be in, you test them so you have something to compare it to later on. Right. A baseline right. is very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Baseline is very important. It's, I, I said baseline this, is mm -hmm. critical and you know I had a big def big argument with the Department of Defense because they were testing people going in but they never they only tested a few when they were coming out. Right. And I said well, how the heck can you make a conclusion? Right. I want to start doing it with high school. Yeah. I want to start doing high school in every sport. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and they do it at a professional level. We do it in soccer, right. we do it in hockey, they do yeah. it. Yeah. 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 We're getting We it. actually, so going back 10 years ago, we actually um, received funding to offer uh, up to 100 high schools baseline testing for their student athletes. Yeah. And we had to knock down the doors of That's the high fair, schools. Fair. It and took us three wow. years to get 100 high schools. Yeah, I remember um, going to, to uh, yeah. I, went, I went to Nutley. High school yes. went to Passaic Valley High School. Yep. Wow. Also in Passaic County. And uh, I felt, and, and the first time I went to one of those schools, I felt like I was from Mars. Yeah. yeah. What do you want to take our athletes through? <laughs> and, I, and I said, well, this is, you know, one, things are going to be voluntary. Right. But this is for the students' benefit. That's yeah. right. Be it male or female. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because we want to know if there is unfortunate problems that occur out in the field, that we could test that individual later on and make a comparison mm -hmm. to what was and what is. 
Now you mentioned Nutley High School, and so I just need to say that Nutley is actually becoming a model for concussion it is. It is. management. That's great. Yeah, yeah. they've yeah. actually um, taken the concussion they protocol the and they're bringing it into the classroom, yeah. and there's, they're developing a whole process now. So it's not just a return to play model, but it's actually a return to learn. So model. please tell me, That's my friend, fantastic. the athletic director there. Is, is partly involved in this. He absolutely is. Fantastic. That's great. And now we might understand why they're oh, so he involved. Oh, he led the way. <laughs> he was, when I went to him, yeah. he says, I'm all in. Yeah. yeah. I said, well, wait till I to hear what I got to say. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to hear what you got to say. Yeah. You're right. You're yeah. on time. They've I read it. about this and I yeah. read about that. So people are a lot more educated. People are going to be a lot more educated and people are going to seek help. Right. And when people seek help, they have coverage. Mm -hmm. Insurance is involved in this kind of thing. I don't have to tell you, right. Leonard. Right. Insurance is involved in this. And thinking if you don't have insurance, right. mm -hmm. think if you fall off That's the roof. That's what the problem is. I right. mean, what am I going to do? Hyperbaric <laughs> chamber treatment, uh, oxygen replacement treatment, um, understanding your diet, uh, and what to eat, uh, trying to be as gluten free and, and high protein, wow. high fiber as possible, because that affects mm -hmm. the brain in the way you mm -hmm. think. And that's the stuff that people that can't afford right. need to know and understand. Right. Mm -hmm. What should parents do, f most of all, of anything? When they I think one of the most important things parents can do is be educated, be aware, be involved in their student athlete's life. Ask male the or question. female? Absolutely. This is absolutely male or female. As I think I mentioned earlier, tell, females... Tell us why we need to be particularly concerned about girls in this situation. Well, females actually have a higher incidence of sports-related concussions. Oh, really? You'd never yes. know it. No, you would not know. You know no. Cheerleaders. <laughs> and in fact, we, we talk about football. Wrestling actually is the highest incidence of concussion. You know, we talk about football right. because the number of people who play football is so much sure. greater. So the incidence is greater across football. But it's actually all sports and not just sports. It's recreation, it's in every right. way of life. So parents really need to be involved, know the symptoms of concussion, and ask the questions. Doctor, we really, really enjoy it. I wish we had more time. Me too. So because do I. Because you're so <laughs> full of knowledge, and Leonard, you're full of knowledge Thank here. Thank you so it's much. And when they, you're full of knowledge and you're out there in the community. Correct. And I can I tell you eyeball to eyeball, I'm committed to this, as Thank you me. know, since 1999, yes. and I'm not coming off of it. Thank you, and we appreciate that greatly. And, yeah. and we do. We're, we gonna, do. we're moving forward. We're going to put pressure on everybody Absolutely. to do the right thing. Yes, Absolutely. thank you. Laura, to do the right thing. And I want to thank you all for thank being you. here. I deeply appreciate it. Thank you very thank much you. for having Thank you for having us. us. I want to thank you for watching the edition of To The Point. I'd like to thank my guests today, uh, Leonard Marshall, Dr. Nancy, Cheryl Velati, very good, <laughs> and Wendy very Burke. Good. You have heard our thoughts. Now I would like to hear what you think about today's show. If you have any comments, concerns, or questions, stay tuned. Our address, our phone number, our website address will appear in a moment. Thanks again for tuning in. See you next time on To The Point.